So hi everybody, uh, Data Dice again here um, today talking again like last week about uh, GA4. We covered the topic of uh, yeah what the difference between Universal Analytics and GA4 is. Today we go a little bit more into detail talking about a customization of the front end, so custom reports and things connected with that, and also export um, options, for example, to BigQuery, which is quite important. So stay tuned and enjoy. Good. Uh, so we're back. Alex, Thomas, and Ricardo. And we're picking back up from last week's video. And hopefully last week. <laughs> at some point, some point in the in the recent past video. <laughs> Alex, you want you had more topics to, to go into Google Analytics for versus Universal Analytics. Yes. So one big focus that especially GA4 is setting now is the to customize the GA4 front end and so on. So for example, you can now create custom reports. You can also already, or you already did it um, or was able to in, in Universal Analytics. But in GA4, you also have more visualization styles, finals, just a table and so on. You also have, you have charts, um, cohort um, stuff and so on and so on. Um, but especially, or most of the time, you're just using a table or maybe a chart, but most of the time a table to see um, especially, for example, event values and event parameters, because there you are setting up a lot of custom stuff. Um, and due to that, the things which are GA4 offering in terms of the events and so on, you have in the default um, reports. Um, yeah, so you can do a lot of custom stuff there. There are also some limitations um, still, and hopefully also GA4 will fix them. Um, but yes, so maybe you can also quickly explain what was already before in Universal Analytics. Mm -hmm. um, I would start with that GA4 feels way more customizable right now. I'm not quite sure if that's the right word, customizable, but uh, you can existing. Customizable, thanks. Um, I mean, in general, Universal Analytics, this whole report thing felt always a little bit like it's there, but it's not really well integrated. You can create custom reports, but at the end, it was a very static tool. Mm -hmm. With GA4, they changed it a lot, I would yeah. say. And, so, you, um, so you have the section of really custom reports on not, not completely sure, ex exploration, I think it is called. Um, so yeah, where you can really cre create an own template, a new chart, whatever, and then putting in your dimensions and so on with different tabs and so on and so on. But you can also change the whole navigation on your own if you want, or you can also change the default um, stuff you have already in GA4. Um, so for example, if you like, you have your event table, um, and then you also can put under it, you can add a new overview chart or whatever, or to see a certain behavior of one event, how it's changing over time, the um, event counts and so on. So that, for example, is possible. There are, but so the ideas behind are really good. Um, but there are still a lot of um, limitations for that. For example, this kind of overview chart, so where you see uh, uh, time behavior and so on, or date behavior, um, it's still, you just have templates you cannot really change. Um, still, but that's maybe also a little bit different topic, but due to that GA4 is not really session driven, it is more user driven. Um, you also don't got so many session um, uh, data out of it which also we have some problems in terms of other topics and so on. So just maybe to keep it in mind. Um, yes, or for example, um, the cardinality, I think it is called. Um, so that means, let's say, for example, you have a um, event, you have a purchase event, and then you are always tracking the transaction ID. Um, and usually um, GA4 says, not completely sure, let's say, an event parameter should have just 2,000 different um, um, metrics or different values um, inside, which makes total sense when you're doing categorization or whatever, so that you don't have 2,000 different categorizations of pages or whatever. Um, but for example, transaction IDs is a problem. And when you're putting the transaction ID, maybe with another KPI inside and so on, you get a lot of this kind of other um, fields or a row which is set other, 
because it doesn't um, yeah, calculate all the transaction IDs and all the different KPIs. So after a certain limit, GA4 said, whatever, it's other and everything. And then you have for some, um, uh, for some tables you want to build, you have then a other weight of 90%, which is for sure shitty. Um, so that's one of the biggest thing they think, should check. Um, I think it's a cost optimization thing they did yeah, for, the for, yeah. for, for the data. So uh, that you don't understand that thing uh, the wrong way. The data is, of course, there. Yeah. It's just the way at the front end is displaying the data with others, like grouping them. Um, but uh, we will talk about uh, export functionality um, a little bit later in the video. Um, and there we can uh, talk about um, the, the data in the background again. Um, as we said, and as you also said, um, this whole customization thing feels quite good already. So your starting page is already customizable. Um, with Universal Analytics, I'm not even sure. There was also this home page, but I think this the session in, GF, uh, in Universal Analytics started with the audience page quite often, I think, um, but I'm not super sure. But definitely um, you were going inside those standard reports. You could also change them, adapt them, edit them. But for all the universal analytics implementations I saw, no one was really doing that. Uh, and so the standard like reports, everyone was using them. And um, now they would like to switch a little bit more to having your reports and also creating your views you would like to see. It also feels a little bit, um, if you search for those standard reports, it's not as easy as in Universal Analytics because there it was on the left-hand side in the navigation quite prominent. Now the focus is a little bit more on, on, on customization and not on those standard reports, but they are still there, a little bit sorted in a different way. Um, but it's also acquisition. It's like whatever happens on the website, like behaviors. And it's um, um, also the stuff um, when it comes to conversions. Um, for example, this conversion thing, because we also have customers who are on the, with uh, web um, newsletter and so on, on newspaper. Um, and for example, they don't have sometimes a conversion event or something because you cannot purchase something. So you should, list, uh, you should read the newspaper um, there. Um, and then, for example, you can take out in GA4, you can take out the complete conversion section because you don't have conversion. So while you are taking the place or people then look into it and then see there's no data, what's going on here? Is it wrong? So you're just taking out the conversion thing um, because for you, you don't have really good conversions um, and more focusing on page views, user behavior, um, how the people coming to your page and so on, which is quite cool, I would say. Block, blocks, the same thing, right? Blocks you normally have no conversions. Mm -hmm. I mean, how do you define a you conversion? Can, for yeah, sure, you can I mean, kind of micro conversions or you can set conversions. Um, but I yeah. think for every company, for every for every company, there is one main conversion they are interested Could in. Be, yeah. um, but then you can decide if you just want to set it as an event, which is then exactly. quite important for you, or really a conversion. Yeah. Um, yes. Also, maybe one thing: the sharing thing. Yeah. Um, reports. So yeah, report sharing. Um, so in GA4, I quickly check, or I will check it after the video, but I'm pretty sure that you have two stages or two states, you can say, how you can share or how you can build your custom reports also for other. So when you're creating a custom report or also create a new navigation part, whatever, a new page, um, you can set it on your own. So then just you see it. Or you can say, okay, I publish it in a way so that every person who have access to the um, property also see um, this, the new navigation or your custom report, whatever. Um, uh, I'm not sure you can check it, but I'm pretty sure that you cannot say, okay, I want to give it to that person via email or whatever, or a link. Um, yeah. In GA, At least not dynamically. Uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, you probably can export it or whatever, but yeah. um, okay. in Universal Analytics, it was um, different and it was not implemented in a good way, um, I would say. Because um, you could also share um, customized reports, but you need to share them via link. So you could say, okay, share to this and that person. Um, then they receive an email or you share the link directly. Um, and then this person could open the link, save it as their own report. But where I'm not completely sure, I also need to check that because we didn't do it so often. Um, what happens if you then, or what happened, and still is happening when you change that report on your side 
I think it's not changing for the other person I think so, yeah. who opened the link and saved it in their customized report. So there was, I think, no real way to dynamically share reports. Mm -hmm. You can also change over time. And this is something which is for a lot of teams heavily needed. And with uh, publishing that to everyone who has access to that is a good um, mm -hmm. improvement already, mm -hmm. I would say. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So then let's switch to BigQuery export um, because I think that's also one of the also for us, especially due to that we are quite con conform with um, BigQuery and so on, a good thing in terms of what changed now from Universalytix to GA4. So in Universalytix, it was possible to export the data to BigQuery, but just when you are 360 customer. So you have to pay for GA, uh, for Universalytix. Which came with a high cost flag um, yes. per year. Mm -hmm. um, then you had no limits, I think, or let's say no real limits uh, when you are not a not one of the biggest companies on the world i would say i think you had no limits at all yeah, um because okay. uh, the more hits you have or you had um the higher the price mm -hmm. per year was yeah. so that was already uh, included in the calculation yeah so that was for sure always for us especially um a big pain so because a lot of people are using the um the non-paid version of um, university and then you cannot export data to another data warehouse so for yeah. example to BigQuery. There was this public API um, mm. so um, a lot of SaaS tools were using this public API we implemented the public API as well but um, it was not the public API was not programmed in a way that you can say give me all the raw data it was more like you can export um, from different endpoints uh, nine fields um, with different, with with different dimensions, dimensions metrics and metrics and um, there needed to be one dimension inside, at least, I think, uh, um, doesn't matter. But um, it's a problem when you would like to have the client ID, the session ID, and so on. Um, this was naturally not there. Of course, you could create a custom dimension for that. And um, what a lot of people did, like creating custom dimension for, um, let's say, a random generated session ID and random generated client ID or user ID, um, and then export those two um, custom dimensions plus additional dimensions or metrics you would like to have. You could do that multiple times and then move all the data together. But as you already see, that was not a nice and convenient way to, to get your raw data. Um, and now, um, Alex, uh, you can basically explain um, what changed. Yes. So in GA4 now, everybody can export their data to BigQuery, which is quite cool. Um, you have a limit of data you can export to BigQuery, 1 million hits per day or events per day. Uh, maybe let's say more events. Um, so yes, that is one of the basic things. Basic things. One quick thing is, for example, that you also can set in the export now the location you want to send the data. Um, because before in University Dix, it was uh, by default just possible to push it to a U US data set, right? Um, you can tweak it in some way to also push it to a um, European Union, for example, um, data set or whatever. Now you can just select this, uh, the location and then say, okay, you want to just want, you don't want to send it to US, you want to send it to European Union, for example. Um, what they also changed due to this kind of limit, you can, um, uh, you can say which um, events you don't want to export to um, to BigQuery. So if you are over this 1 million events per day, which can happen, especially for newspaper and so on, which I said, um, then you can say, okay, we are most interested in uh, page views and we are not over this 1 million thing per page view. So we are exporting at least the page views, for example. And maybe you also have one or two more events, uh, which are quite important, but don't happen so often. Then you can also put it inside the, the export, uh, which is also quite cool. So that is quite easy. Um, yes. So, and then you can set up, you can also, um, say in GA4, if you want to set, um, if you want to set it regularly, so uh, more uh, streaming data, or just if you want to send it one time per day. Um, so yeah, this kind of intraday table and so on. You're not sure what's happening if you only select streaming data. Yes. Did we find out? No, we no, can no, check, no, right? Didn't check. So, so you have this, um, this batch processing, like at every day in the morning or somewhere i'm not quite sure what what is it did you check uh, maybe one other question did you check the time when it's normally no, it's going still, to be exported no, uh, still not really um so somewhere in the midday um, yeah. but no time also due to that i think google Analytics still doesn't know it exactly or cannot 
Cannot and it will also not, not give any SLA, um, yeah. at least not for non-360 customers. Non so 360 is, is is still there. So you can still book 360 as, 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 a, as a service. Um, coming back to the original question, um, you have, as Alex said, two versions. You can have a batch export. That means every day in the morning or till lunch normally, the past day was going to be exported. And you have a second option, it's streaming, that the data is going to be streamed in an intraday, let's say, table. So um, I'm not quite sure how quick that thing is, didn't check it. But um, before you had the same option um, for 360 customers, you could say, okay, stream or give me um, daily data. With streaming, you have one problem because you don't get certain metrics, like for example, or certain dimensions, like for example, the... Um, how do you say that the combined user ID, which was uh, calculated, this could only be given if you take the batch export, like the daily export. Why? Because Google cannot calculate this dimension over time while streaming. That's not possible in terms of calculation time and so on. So, and also of cost. Um, and then you need to decide, okay, do I want to go for streaming or do I want to go for batch export? Now you can select both, which is quite cool. Um, so you get the daily um, data, but you also get intraday streams. What I don't know, what we ask ourselves um, some days ago, when you only select streaming, what happens then? Is then the intraday table going to be deleted at the end of the day and a new one is created? Yeah, I don't think so. Uh, or do they? So, but what's the difference then yeah. to if I basically yeah. select both? So, uh, so we'll find that out. In um, all tutorials, they say just mark or both of them. We also <laughs> did it. Um, <laughs> But for example, especially also when you're doing the streaming thing, you're also getting still already the user ID or what, as uh, Thomas said, the in universal X, it was not there if you are doing the streaming thing. Yeah. So in, in GA4, they're also kind of calculating the user ID already or user pseudo ID, or what it's called. Um, yeah. So to be honest, if you, if you know it, so if you know what's the difference there and so on, let us know, it would be quite interesting um, because maybe you have more insights there. Um, yes. So and then you have your data in BigQuery. Um, the data set is a little bit called different. In Universalytics, it was the property, just the property ID, right? In GA4, it is now analytics underscore and then the property ID. Um, yeah, and then you have still your event table and if you have the intraday table. Um, yes. And as we said, this kind of structure behind is different. So in Universalytics, it's more one row, one page view. And in, um, for the GA4 export, it's more one role, one event, um, plus the event parameters and so on. For example, you also have the traffic source just on user level. Um, where you're getting then uh, in terms of how, how the user came to the website and so on. Very, very, very important point, by the yeah. way, uh, which we also found out a little bit late while um, yeah. working on, on clients' data, that you don't get the source where the customer's coming from per session you get it per the, per user that means first click at the end right which is not big big um, problem so because for example also on LAN, so we also have, for example the session start event so when a new session starts and then you can check has it using UGM parameters and so on sometimes it's also part of the parameters of the event parameters so then you have medium source and so on but for example, a big pain point then is Google Ads because there, when you're doing auto tagging and so on, you just get a Google Click ID and then you don't get any kind of UTM parameters and so on. And then you don't know from which, um, yeah, from which source the user came from, which campaign, whatever. Work around for that. You need to set up the Google Ads transfer um, and <laughs> merge everything back. Yeah. It's working. It's working super good, but it's of course bigger time invest to map everything and yeah. uh, make so, sure that yeah would be good when google just so this user thing is cool um they can also stay it like that but to also have the traffic source based on session would be good yeah so then they can session source session medium session campaign yeah. user source user medium user campaign if you see that google that would be nice <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay cool. i think we mentioned two more important topics very good and if they would like to see more <laughs> more important topics, either in written form, visual, media, or whatever, how would they do it? So, yeah. At first, if you didn't check our first video about it, you can check it. So it's the <laughs> video before. No. 
um, on YouTube. Uh, we also already talked about the end of universal ethics, so what you have to do then and so on um, in terms of the switching to GA4 if you want to see still data next year or end of next year. Um, yes, we still have our Medium blog post where we're also already covering some GA4 topics, GTM topics and so on. Um, we have LinkedIn where we put some technique in, uh, tech stuff inside or um, from our team. And we have our newsletter where you get every Friday some cool um, insights about some cool data topics. Okay. Very good. Okay. If you would like to get spammed with updates whenever we upload a new video, then uh, you can also, you know what to do at the end. Very good. Subscribe to the channel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very, Very good, good Alex. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for helping out. <laughs> then thanks everybody and see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.